Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to unpack probably one of the most contentious topics on the internet, especially in the realms of portrait photography. So we're going to look at today, what size should the file be if you're sending them to a client as web only, aka they'll look crap on print. If you are new here, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon because the bell icon will give you a notification every single time. We release a video, which is usually every week, but I mean, don't hold me to that. And if you don't know me, I'm Jess, multi-award winning international portrait photographer with 16 titles to my name, including the four bases of the society's trophies, which are currently my paperweights. Sorry about that. That feels really bad about the trophies being used as a paper, but it was the best option. Shall we begin? What most people think of as a web res, web size file is something at 72 ppi, right? Which is actually just all made up. There's, there's no real science behind the 72. That came from um, Apple computers in the olden days, which had a screen resolution of exactly that. So I'm not the best person to walk through all of the nitty gritty with, purely because numbers and me... You know, we just don't get on. However, if you do want to know the nitty gritty ins and outs of exactly the main deal with PPI and resolutions and so on and so forth, then do consider having a look at volume 10 of Talk Talk Magazine. So Talk Talk Magazine is our members magazine and in volume 10, coincidentally, it's just like we'd planned this, there is a really, really good article and it's ginormous, I can't get to the start of it, inside which goes through all of this in a painful level of detail but a level of detail where by the end of it you will 100% understand so that is volume 10 of talk talk magazine for the members to simplify things we might be thinking of something like 3000 pixels on the longest side or 2000 pixels on the longest side or 1000 pixels on the longest side or 2048 pixels on the longest side but does that really mean that the client can't print it? No, of course not. The client could print anything that you give them. And if we're being literally serious about wanting something in print to be 300 pixels per inch, for example, then 3000 pixels wide, yeah, at 300 ppi is exactly 10 inches wide. So that's where your 10 by eight comes from, right? But what if the client printed that 3000 pixel wide image at 30 inches wide? What happens then? Well, realistically, the PPI drops at that stage to 100. So there's only 100 pixels per inch in that image now, which in all fairness, at the viewing distance that you would normally have on a 30 inch wide piece, you probably wouldn't actually be able to notice that much in the way of lost detail. But to help illustrate some of these concepts and to answer the question of how big should the file be if we want it to be web only and not printable, I thought we'd do some examples. So thanks, major thanks over to Digital Lab, the team at Digital Lab, who have helped us out by printing one picture multiple times so that we can explain this process. And I want to go through it in a way that the client might use, that we might use, and what we're expecting. So in front of us right now, the top print on my stack of prints is a 30 inch wide print. And it is the normal high resolution file. This is what I would be sending to print and the level of detail that we can see in this is quite good. Like it's really good high resolution image. So if I sent this image to print, I wouldn't have any issues with it. You can see the sharpness around the uh, main focal points of the image. There isn't any noticeable degradation in the file. So what we don't have is any banding appearing or artifacting breakup of the colors. We don't have any of that going on. And, and this is a pixel size, a pixel dimensions. It's set to be 30 inches wide at 300 ppi is what I've told it to come out as, right? What we put as the PPI is kind of irrelevant. It's more about the inches, so how many pixels exist. And I've achieved this with the camera that I have and also um, just being able to make sure I just tweak that image size in Photoshop afterwards. So that gives us this, what we're looking at right now, which is a really, really, really high quality print and printed to 30, 40 inches, which we also have with us here, it is flawless. We can't see any major issues. The image is beautiful. So you're my client. I've sent you the file that you've purchased uh, and it's web only, right? Social media res. 
And social media res for me in this example that we're going to use first is 3000 pixels on the longest side. Okay, so I've just changed it to 3000 pixels on the longest side. Like we've said, PPI is irrelevant. So that's not counted in this. And I've sent it to you, the client. Now you've gone and you've gone to go and print this image. You've printed this file and you've gone to print it at 30 inches wide. Now, what happens at that point is we end up having to either let the printer upsample the image to get to that at a resolution that it's happy with, for example, 300, or alternatively, the client could try and mangle fashion their way through this to upsample it as well. And what that leaves us with is a 30 by 20 print that was printed from a 3000 pixel file, which looks a little bit different. That looks like this. So with that blown up, we end up here. And you might have thought this was gonna look really, really bad, but actually even at the viewing distance that I'm sat at from here, which is closer than you would be looking usually at a 30 inch piece, print looks fine, like it looks absolutely fine. However, what's happened in that kind of upsampling process and making it larger, or in the reduction in the pixels per inch that come out in, at the end, is that we've lost a little bit of the sharpness. So we've just gone a little bit fuzzy where it was crystal clear. And then where we look around the image, what we can see is the start of a little bit of breakup in the color. So some of the areas have started to, what we would normally colloquially say banding, they've just started to artifact. So we've got little bits where it's not looking too great. Would a client be happy with this sitting on their wall? Yes. They would, they genuinely would. A client would be fine with this on their wall. They're not going to be able to see that level of difference in detail. And to be honest, this image that's sat in front of me right now is no different than an image printed to 30 inches on one of the old DSLR cameras or from a less experienced photographer who perhaps didn't have everything nailed when they were shooting in camera. So is 3000 pixels safe? No, not really. Really, it's not. So then we look at a different option. What about 72 PPI, which everybody says you should use for web res, and 2048 pixels on the longest side, which is often the holy grail. Can we print that at 30 inches? If we don't let anybody do the upsampling, what happens? Let's have a look. And if you're not watching this in 4K, you really should be, because this will you'll be able to actually see the difference. So what we have in front of us now, we've got more artifacting, more banding has come visible in the more kind of like out of focus bokeh areas of the portrait. And what we've lost is an extra level of detail just around the subject's face where the focal point of the image is. But the question is, did it work? Can we print it that size? Well, yeah, of course we can print it that size. Um, the second question is, would a client be happy with this print? I'd say most of them would be quite happy to put this on their wall if they only paid for a web res file. I've seen things on people's walls that would make everybody wince. This isn't that bad. And remember the viewing distance. So the viewing distance of a 30 inch piece, especially if it's in a frame or something like that, is coming back to about a meter, perhaps even more. And at that distance, would you be able to see any of the things that I've just pointed out? No. You wouldn't. And so if 2000 pixels isn't safe, even just to 30 inches, I personally print my artwork gigantic. So this is quite small in comparison. Um, is that safe? Is 2048 pixels safe? Probably not. So what is a safe size to print out? What is the safe web browser option? And the answer to the question is there isn't one. There really isn't one. Because the client could print this print that's right in front of me at 10 inches wide and it would look absolutely crystal. If you were to submit or send off or deliver a 1000 pixel wide file, could the client print that? Yes, we're getting into risky territory on the PPI there. It would start to look a little bit naff, even at a small print, because that's a closer viewing distance. Uh, but I know many clients that would still do that. They would still be happy with that print. So really, the question that you have to ask yourself is, should you really be offering WordPress social media only files? And if so, how are you going to protect them? Hopefully that's started a little bit of a conversation. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. What is the safe WordPress only file or should WordPress files realistically perhaps not exist? I'll see you soon.